Welcome back everybody, this is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today I've got a couple of special guests with me here today. This is Ralph and I've got Jake and they're from Piedmont Cartridge and they are bringing out guns in 9x39 and you guys are, may or may not be familiar with Ventores. Um, it's kind of an odd rifle in of itself. It's a specific gun design that the Russians came up with to launch a 250 to 275 grain projectile uh, subsonic, semi-automatically, very, very quiet, uh, meant to be definitely an integral suppressed platform and for uh, clandestine operations, I guess yep. we would we would certainly say. Pretty much. Um, so you're basically getting into the territory of a parent case, which is 7.62 by 39, opened up to essentially what's a 9.3 or 9 millimeter projectile that weighs 245 grains. In this case, two ammo is bringing in the ammunition that we have been using over the last uh, couple of days here. And, you know, basically it's, I guess, kind of a wildcat of 7.62 by 39 in a way. I guess you could consider it. Sort of, yeah. Yeah. That's what yeah. it started as, certainly. Yeah. But, you know, basically, you know, taking that big heavy bullet, running at very sedate speeds, like I think these things are running like 1050. Okay, so you're getting subsonic speeds. Very, very quiet. I mean, we were metering these guns like 125 decibels. So very, very quiet. Pretty much hearing safe. Yeah, hearing safe for sure. So you guys are running AR uppers and you're also coming out with an AK. So tell us a little bit about some of the struggles that you've had with this. <laughs> well, when we first started working on this, we recognized what the capabilities of the round was. And I thought, well, you know, if we suppress this, it'll be a really a lot of fun to shoot. And, you know, uh, for me, I get a lot of requests from people. I want a hunting gun that's suppressed so I can go out at night shooting hogs or, or whatever, and I don't want to disturb people in the neighborhood. So that was going to be a great round. We started working with it, and we discovered a lot of things. One of the things we discovered was that uh, the round is a very, very low-powered round. If you look at some of the ARs, you'll notice the gas blocks are way, way back. It's a much shorter than pistol gas system. And we had to do that because there's just a not, a, not a lot of gas, not a, lot, not a lot of impulse built up into the weapon to get it to run right. But on the other hand, when you shoot it suppressed, it's quiet, isn't it? That's right. There's not a lot of guns that you can shoot a watermelon, knock it into pieces, and actually hear all the watermelon fall all over the ground. That and was, hear the action cycle. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. It was a lot of fun. So uh, our first option was to uh, build an AR. We built the AR. We, we've, we've We've got it running. We then turned that into a pistol. We even built a bolt action because there's a lot of people that want to use those for hunting where they can't use an AR, but they can use a bolt gun. And so it, it makes it very compact. You can add a suppressor to it. You could not have a suppress, but you know, again, you're going to get this 9 by 39 round that's going to deliver a lot of energy, be really quiet. The next step was to make AKs. Uh, Jake is actually the, uh, the gunsmith that did a lot of the building, and uh, I'll, I'll let him, him talk about some of the AKs. Which one you want first? Uh, doesn't matter. I mean, you can, you can take a look at this one. This one here is actually going to be uh, very close to what our production model is going to be. Um, and uh, most of you AK fans out there, myself included, we like, uh, we like the original style. We like, uh, we like the wood furniture, you know, the upper and lower hand guard. Uh, Sharp edges. And yeah, um, so there are some there are some challenges to getting these things to work with a round with that low of pressure. When I say low pressure, I mean ultra low. It's it's lower than seven six two by thirty nine by a significant margin. So uh, so you've got to get creative with how the gas reaches the piston. Uh, the second main hurdle is the unavailability of magazines currently. So. With, uh, with that in mind, that's why we, have, we had to install these, which are the, uh, the Candace Design Group uh, Magwell adapters, because these Unimags that feed the ARs will work with the 9x39. So, you know, necessity, uh, mother of invention, all that. Uh, we have one VSS mag, only one. So, uh, this is pretty much what the, uh, the production models are going to shoot. Are, are going to be these VSS mags right here. So, you know, ditch all this, go back to standard configuration. Um, also, the production model, standard rear tang, standard upper and lower hand guard, standard top cover. So, you want to use that, uh, that Texas Weapon Systems top cover. You want to use, uh, you know, the, uh, you want to use the new folding brace from CNC Warrior. Uh, you can do that because this gun is set up to do that. So, 
you know, thinking of you guys out there uh, wanting to mod your guns because I know you all do. So, um, you know, other than that, I've got, uh, we have the uh, other one over here. That was, uh, that was our first attempt. Uh, they're both, they're both running the same can. This is actually uh, our, uh, this is our AK can from uh, Piedmont Cartridge. It's, uh, uh, it's actually an alloy, it's an aluminum alloy can. The round's so low pressure that you can actually shoot this thing on fully automatic and, uh, <laughs> and, it, and it holds up no problem. I mean, it's, uh, you can hear the, the bolt clacking. That's, that's about it. It's so, pretty loud, the bolt mechanism. Yeah, it, it's, it's slap, 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 so, slap. So. Let me ask something. So with the 9x39, and it, it, it is such a low pressure cartridge. Correct. So part of the challenge of, of getting it to run an AK platform is really the same challenge that you have with getting an AK to run subs reliably. Oh, absolutely. Like if you were to absolutely. load 762 by 39 subs, some guns are finicky in terms of how they want to run those semi-automatic. That's correct. So getting a gun to cycle subs, you know, getting an AR-15 to cycle 300 blackout subs is a lot more doable because it's sort of a built built to tailor option right in terms of the gas system and the twist rates on the barrels and everything like that and what they're designed to stabilize and the propellants of the cartridge but nine by 39 it's it's a different animal when you're trying to you know make it happen in this exactly it's a, it's, a, it's an entirely different animal it's one of those where not only that with the with ars ars being modular like they are and ars being you know having having their gas seat where you just slip your gas block on put your your handguard over top of it it's uh, a little easier to do than trying to mod one of these to uh, to actually shoot a, a, an ultra low pressure round. That's neat. Uh, lots of uh, lots of drilling involved. Uh, lots of crying actually was involved with this one. Um, so it uh, in the end though we got her to work. Um, it uh, it does its job. So there's a few tweaks that are going to be made before these are going to be put into production. Uh, between the two of these, I think I've learned enough to actually uh, come out with something that's going to work really good. So stay tuned. Very neat. So you've got your AR uppers that you're doing. You've got your AKs that are set up to be sort of a take on the, the Ventores. Now the Ventores as a specific rifle, as a rifle design, is vastly different than this. Yes. Th this is not, you know, meant to be in a clone of the original Ventores. It's Correct. just meant to be your take on what we would come up with uh, as a Ventores here in the U.S. Because, for one, availability, the guns are simply just not available here. They're very, and if they are here, there's probably literally not many, and they're probably in CID labs or they're they're, they're in museums <laughs> or you know they're they're not in a place where they can be inspected or or you know looked at very closely. So. You know, doing a full-on Ventura's clone is a completely different animal in terms of, in terms of just making an AK that shoots 9x39 because it is such a specific thing. Like, everything from the suppressor on that rifle to the gas system, the way it's set up, I mean, it's a pretty specific... The Ventura's is really more like the SVD than uh, it is an AK. It's, it, I mean, as far as, yeah, a, uh, a variant that just kind of looks like it, sure. It's, uh, it, I, I call it a fancy well rod. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's what I call it. That makes it's a, sense. It's a fancy well rod. I mean, yeah. it's 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 uh it's it's very crude. Just like uh, it it has all of the usual Russian subtlety, which is zero. Um, but it's uh, it's one of those where the uh, the the actual receiver itself is a bit shorter. The throw of the action is shorter. Uh, they actually, I and I again, I've never held one, so. I couldn't tell you how they did it, but I know they actually uh, took steps to quiet the clack of the bolt forward. Uh, because, as, as uh, Eric just mentioned, it's it's quite loud when you're actually shooting it. You you hear that metal slapping on metal more than you hear the report of the uh, round going off. So actually, you know, you know what the funny thing is is that when when you're shooting the uh, the AKs, they're so quiet you actually hear the triggers reset. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things where you're like, what's that noise? Oh, it's the trigger resetting. I'm not used to hearing that yeah. when you're actually <laughs> shooting. Yeah. So I, I and I've I've been I, I answer the phone every single day. Can you make me Ventress clothes? Can you make me a clone? And the answer is no because you know everything is just so custom that uh, you know I can make it for you. I don't know if you'd want to pay for it. It would it would just be so expensive. But again, as as Jake said, the great thing about this weapon is that. Uh, you know, you can take all your, your standard attachments and parts and basically put them on here and do whatever you want to do because it's, it's built on, on basically what is the, the close to, a, to an AK standard. Well, even the, uh, even the barrel contour, I mean, that's a, that's, uh, what was that, a 10-inch barrel, 10 and a half, something yeah. like that, uh, up to um, 
and including where the uh, the front sight block sits, standard AKM contour. So I mean, uh, it's 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 almost like a 16 inch AKM barrel that's been lopped off almost, but it's a, it's standard contour, so it'll fit fairly standard parts. That's nice. So getting away from the rifles themselves, let's talk a little bit more about 9x39. Like earlier, we were talking about it a little bit, but I want to talk about it on camera. So how long is this, has this ammo been in the country? I mean, has it, because Tool Ammo is importing 9x39. That means there has to be some demand for it for them yes. to import it. Yes. So how long has this ammo even been coming in the country? We got our first ammo uh, ooh, about a year ago, I guess. And uh, it was very, it was, you know, we didn't get a lot. We got, we got a couple boxes. Right. And then we got a couple barrels and we put stuff together. And that began our journey of, well, gee, that doesn't work. Let's try this. That's right. Uh, and and it, it took us, you know, to build this weapon, this was probably about three months worth of work to get it to where it would cycle properly. Uh, it, it wasn't destroying the uh, brass. The, the, the weapon would, would shoot. It does what it's supposed to. Um, and then once we got that done, then we knew what the big hill was going to be was the AK, and that sure. kind of pointed us to how, how what a steep hill that was going to be, too. Are you guys going to be working on, uh, I'm assuming, probably doing brass, projectiles, reloading dies, you know, being, getting people to where they can reload this cartridge a bit will be kind of a downrange point yeah. as well? We, we actually have, uh, I have some brass samples uh, that we're, we're getting into production. Hopefully uh, this summer we're actually be able to uh, release out both uh, bullets and brass. Um, we're looking at uh, a solid lead that's coated. We're looking at a full metal jacket, a solid copper, and a, and a frangible round. Uh, yeah. Plus, we'll also have components available. So we're, we're really excited about that. It's just, it's like everything else. It just Hurry takes up, time. Wait. It takes time and it takes tooling and everyone goes, well, why aren't we going faster? Well, if I, you know, if I wrote another check for $10,000, it would go faster. But, you know, it is, it is what it is. Stuff so takes time. Would you like to help make it go faster? Yes, that's right. <laughs> if so, you, if you, go ahead. Earlier, Chad was collecting some data uh, on these things and uh, Jake and I rode over the house and we were doing a little bit of work behind the reloading bench. Now it was sort of crude and, and everything but what we were able to do is take some of these tool rounds and pull them with a kinetic pull, uh, bullet puller and we seated some Barnes triple shocks on there just for fun. We found that the bore diameter is very close to 365, 366 which is really close to 9.3 by 57, 62, that sort of thing. So I, I actually reload 9.3 by 57 so I had some Barnes triple shocks laying around. Also, the bore diameter on the Makarov is 365. Makarov pistol, we were able to pull some pistol projectiles out of some 9x18, and we stuffed a few of those on there. So for, for a reloading standpoint, you're going to be looking at those 365 diameter projectiles. And of course, the, the bore diameters will sort of normalize as production gets into, into play. And we mic'd a bunch of these projectiles from Tula, and they measured out at like 363, 364. So some of them were a little small, okay? Now, I don't know if that would be more from the standpoint of the bore diameter on the Ventores being close to this because the Russians made this ammo or whatever, or is it that maybe, I mean, wh which is it? Are we, are we, is that closer to the nominal bore diameter being at 363, or, or, or is the bore diameter supposed to be closer to the Makarov diameter? Um, I, it's my opinion that the Tula ammo is a little bit small. Okay. And the only reason why I say that is because uh, uh, we went off a of print that, that we got from, uh, um, from Russia, basically, uh, that helped us de de uh, define what the barrel was supposed to be and the, everything else. Sure. And those are just a little bit small. So, um, you know, the Wolf ammo is actually of the right diameter. Okay. So, and quite frankly, as we're developing all, all these weapons, we had to make sure everything worked with both of those as being the factory standards. So, yep. An another step. Yep. Yeah, and, and time will also tell too. I mean, as we experiment with reloading in this particular cartridge, of course, we'll see which projectiles shoot better. And of course, they're going to work on their own projectile designs. I would imagine also people like Lehigh and Maker and no telling who else, you know, will get in on cutting bullets for this particular uh, cartridge. Uh, I think it's got a lot of potential for hog hunting. I'm curious to see how well it works. I mean, it's quiet. You know, you can really sneak up on a, on a pack of pigs when they're out in the open area and lay into them suppressed and really try to take out as many pigs for those farmers as we possibly can. Um, I, I'm really interested to see what the terminal effects of this cartridge are going to be on game.
Uh, and Absolutely. So that's always been the struggle with 300 blackout in the subs is how well do they perform in a subsonic arrangement. You take a 200 or 220 grain subsonic 300 blackout, it has somewhat limited killing power in terms of its terminal ballistic. You get a 110 grain Barnes triple shock in a 300 blackout, that's when the cartridge really starts to shine. So I think it's gonna be interesting to see the 9x39 with a super option available as well. I know you were discussing earlier like 140 to 150 grain bullet and running uh, and try, trying to achieve like maybe 22, 2300 yeah. feet per second. We know to get a little bit more power and maybe see if we can get some bullets expanding and, and just really see what this thing can really do in some game. Absolutely. I think that's gonna be the next step. But it's cool that Tula is at least providing ammo right now and this stuff's in the country where you guys can at least develop this platform and get it going so it's really cool I'm, I'm excited to see how you guys progress with it and we'll see you know once you get some production guns ready we'll get one out and do some testing and you know hopefully the the higher power ammo will be around and we can start popping some gel blocks and see what this thing can do can't wait excited for that yeah man i appreciate you guys coming down today appreciate, appreciate it you having thanks all right. for having us thanks yeah. ralph all right Look guys, I really appreciate you watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you have any other questions about 9x39, reach out to them, or you can leave some comments in the um, comment section below. Uh, we'll try to respond to some of your comments. This is an obscure cartridge not a lot of people know about. We thought that just a quick benchtop would be merited to discuss the cartridge as well as the original platform. And then obviously some of the stuff that Piedmont's doing, really neat stuff. I want to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters. Uh, thank you all to all the folks who support us over by purchasing man cans. Also, merch on the website, t-shirts, merch, anything we sell. If you love the channel, you love what we do, and you want to support us, consider purchasing merch over on the website. All those funds go right back into the channel. So thank you guys so much for the support. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.